So everybody, welcome back to Gray Hack. Uh, let's get back into it. All right, while we're booting up here, I did have a two-parter question that was asked by somebody who's been following the series. Uh, the question, I don't have it in front of me, but essentially boiled down to, uh, it was twofold. Uh, number one, it was regarding uh, the things that we normally would do as far as you know training in offensive security. I mentioned last time that we use uh, Kapora, which are um, scenarios that are built with verisimilitude to um, reproduce um, many of the things that we would normally see in an actual system. Um, and there's many different ways that we do this. Um, there are platforms out there dedicated to it, like uh, hack the box, try hack me, the old hack dot me, and, and so on. Um, we also build up our own, um, you know, in the virtual lab or, or somewhere, uh, for learning purposes, intentionally vulnerable systems, essentially. Um, and the question, first of all, is, uh, why is it unethical to, um, post, as I mentioned before, the terms of service for hack the box and try hack me? Um, request that you not post any write-ups before um, the challenges close. And it's uh, not ethical to do so, and on top of it being a violation of the terms of service. The question part one is, is why is that? And the answer is that, um, well, number one, there is a competitive aspect on Hack the Box and Try Hack Me. You can earn points for doing challenges, so uh, that alone... Um, causes ethical conundrums when it comes to sharing solutions. Um, not that, uh, to my knowledge, not, I mean, there are CTFs, of course, capture the flag events, which sometimes have prize money to my knowledge, hack the box and try hack me. Don't have active prize money going on all the time, although they do host CTFs. <clears throat> so, um, and the other reason, uh, that it is an ethical is because, um, they take a considerable amount of time to develop these scenarios and to offer them appropriate verisimilitude. Um, which means that if you uh, share solutions, then you're undermining all of that work. <clears throat> now, uh, the part two of the question essentially is, um, you know, what about um, a hacking simulator or hacking theme gamed, uh, what I consider, or what I'd be looking for, I guess, uh, in terms of you know, an actual learning tool. Uh, most of the ones that I've come across, if you watch some of the backlogs of my videos that are out there, um, there's not very many. Uh, there's a handful of them that, that really get it right, um, at least most of the way. Uh, Greyhack is one of those, or does seem to be so far. I, I really haven't done any of the challenges. I've just kind of been poking around at it so far. Um, but from what I see, um, it's doing a couple things right, for example, the, the, to the tools, uh, the uh, environment, um, the, the basic gist of what's going on, um, all, all are about there. Um, but it's still, you know, it's a game, um, and so we're, I'm playing it as a game. I'm not really approaching it as a, a serious learning tool, although um, I would say somebody who's looking to, to learn these skills, this isn't a bad place necessarily to start. Um, so ideally... Um, you know, to, to have a, a game uh, that is less game and more learning tool. Uh, ultimately, what I would be looking to do, um, if, of course, I could wave the magic wand and get, you know, all the things that I was looking for, uh, would be uh, something like Greyhack. Um, it's real shortcomings. Oops, I keep, I keep doing that. It's real shortcomings come from stuff like this. Um, where the tools or the exploits rather, and the, many of the sites are, um, they're procedurally generated. If we search for some exploits here, uh, we find that the descriptions are, uh, the same for a lot of them. Um, and if we, just as if we went back and if we search for, uh, um, these are all procedurally generated as well. Um, so what I would be looking for um, is something that uses procedural 
um, just kind of procedurally generates vulnerable systems. And the idea is far-fetched, but it's not actually that crazy because I am familiar with one project on GitHub. Now, disclaimer here, I actually have not uh, used this yet. I haven't played with it, but it looks promising from what I've seen. Uh, something like this, SecGen. Um, oh, it's not maintained and like it doesn't work. Well, that's great. Oh, looks like it's being supported elsewhere. something like this, um, that purports anyway to procedurally generate vulnerable virtual machines, which, um, if it works, and again, I haven't used it myself, although I came across it and, uh, it looks promising, uh, is, is kind of exactly what I'm, what I would be looking for. Uh, the issue of course, is that this is a GitHub, so it's, you know, subject to the whims of whoever happens to be providing it. Um, and I'm also, I can't, attest to you know how exactly it's done or, or whatever you know, you know exactly how it's doing this um but again it looks promising something like that would be um exactly what i would be looking for in a game that is a a learning tool that said again Greyhack, uh is, so far it seems to come pretty close it's definitely uh already one of uh what i consider to be the the better ones in terms of hacking themed games um and i would recommend it to students who have no exposure to offensive security who want to just play around in a no consequence kind of environment and don't have the ability to run their own virtual machines um where they want more of a remote attacker experience that they maybe can't necessarily facilitate on their own so um certainly is something Okay, I'm rambling long enough now. Let's figure out where we were. Uh, we were changing uh, academic record. We got on the box. We found the admin. I probably should have marked this. I think this is the admin. I think that was from the who is. Um, right, or is that the, no, that's the student. Okay. Uh, it was the economy grade, and these were the users on the box, and that was our guest access. Okay, so, um, is there anything else? Oh, yes, I got another comment from uh, Grey Hat Gaming after the last part. Um, what else was there? Let's see. Um, oh yeah, uh, recommends local escalation can be done by exploiting one of the local libs such as net, I init. Um, you're more likely to get user and root access with local exploits. You don't need access to live. Okay, so good to know. Um, that's already what I was going to do today anyway, is to see if I could get, to see if I could elevate with a, with a local exploit since we already had guest access. So that's good to know that I was barking up the right tree here. Um, users online is based on processes running on the system. You can check this with PS. Okay. That's something I, I didn't do last time, but I probably should have. Um, you can trigger this yourself by starting something on the remote machine, similar to your idea on the video. Okay. Yep. So good to know I was barking up the right tree. Well, thanks again for, uh, for following the series, Grey Hat Gaming. I, I, uh, good to know that you're, you're following and that you're, um, enjoying the series. Um, now, what the hell was I doing? Um, I can't remember. Um, was it... Was it that exploit that we got guest access with? I cannot recall. Oops. Or was it... No, it was too high. Okay, now I can't remember what was running. Um, speaking of which, oops, what? Oh, four, three. Um, speaking of which, um, <clears throat> oh, it was the wrong exploit then. It is two five. It is the normal port. Uh, was it? I cannot recall. 
I should maybe just find a new exploit. Anyway, as I was saying, um, there's a number of people that have been following this uh, series, which thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I did just wrap up the last videos for my summer game hacking course, um, which doesn't end until August, but with the bulk of those recordings done, which if you're, if you're not familiar with, uh, with um, Pwn, Adv uh, sorry. Yeah, Pwn Adventure 3, that's what it is. Pwn Adventure 3 is an intentionally vulnerable MMO. If you are interested in game hacking, I recommend you uh, take a look at it. It's a lot of fun. It's the second summer in a row that I've run it. And, okay, that's a different exploit altogether. Okay, well, we're, we're back on it, so. Oh, wait, that's, that's the, that's the router. What? No, it's not. Uh, anyway, if you're interested in uh, game hacking, I recommend taking a look at it. It's a lot of fun. It's the second summer I've run it, and it was a, it was a blast both times. Um, it was for a for a, the uh, Ghost in the Shell Code CTF in 2015. Um, so it's a little bit long in the tooth now, but it's you know still. I mean, it's an intentionally vulnerable MMO where you can't go wrong. There is there is also an offline mode as well. So if you don't want to stand up your own server, uh, you can just download a client and and you can still have at it. So. Um. Oh yeah, the the whole reason I started saying that to begin with. So. Um, um yeah uh since i'm done recording for uh for the game hacking course i still have uh the course itself to monitor and to, uh, students to help out and i do have another summer course that i'm teaching in cyber sociology and i do have an independent study student this summer who's earning an extra credit um creating some forensic some digital forensic for, uh, for us um but otherwise i have a little bit more time on my hands i'm going to be playing some more gray hack and other games for the remainder of the summer so i'm gonna uh, stick with this here put another hour into this game and um play a little bit more often for the, the remainder of the summer i'm gonna do a couple of the challenges here in single player mode and then i'm gonna i'm gonna actually switch to multiplayer because i'm curious about that um gray hack gaming mentioned that the multiplayer mode is persistent it's just that there are other players uh that uh you have to take account for and that they can create their own content and I'm, I'm really curious about that and i'm curious to see if it's more like uh the experience i just described um and if so then that would just be amazing um it would be it would be great i i personally would never i personally cannot it's not that i cannot i would never personally require a student to purchase a game for a class uh, because I personally consider that to be unethical. I know that other professors will mandate students to, um, you know, buy their book or or whatever, and, and that's all well and good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna impugn uh, any colleagues or or whatever out there um, in that regard. But for me personally, I uh, I consider that to be. Uh, a little bit unethical or or at least unnecessary um big believer in in open source uh, learning that said if uh, if i come across a really great game i i don't mind recommending students you know I, if i'm going to point if they're if they're interested in playing a hacking themed game i'm happy to point them in the right direction but um i could never mandate that they purchase a game even one as modestly priced as gray hack which is currently 20 bucks on steam so it's definitely at least worth the 20 bucks, but still I won't, I won't ask a student or tell a student that they need to do that for a course. At my university where I teach, um, textbooks, for example, are all rental based. So if I want a textbook for a course, I tell the university that I'm going to be using a textbook. They purchase enough copies to cover the students. They go to the text rental and they get the books for the semester, return them when they're done. Um, so I don't mind recommending or, or mandating a textbook because they're not paying for it. But I, anything supplemental. Well, okay, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Let me just get to business here. Uh, but the whole the whole reason I was talking is is just to say I'm going to be playing more Greyhack for the summer. Um, I also got a couple other games I'm going to be playing as well. All right. Uh, so where were we? Let's 
I can't remember if we poked around. I mean, I know we poked around, but I can't remember if we actually saw anything. I do remember there was, um, was it under, okay, I can't get to lib. There was something though. Um, I think it was like student viewer or something that looked like what we needed to get. Oops, typing around a microphone. No, that's not it. Um, ah, it. no, that's File Explorer. I know, I know there was something. Uh, sis? No, it shouldn't be anyway. Um, what was this? Was it boot? No. I know it was here. Oh, was it under, um, one of the home directories of one of the other users? No. Shouldn't have access to that. Okay, I thought for sure that we came across a student view and a employee's view. My memory is too, it's been too long since I played the last time. This is why I shouldn't let days go by um, in between. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Just file explorer. Huh. Or was it was it in my oops or was it in my home directory and I just No. No, okay. Okay. No. Yeah, okay. No. No. I don't remember where I saw that then. I'm certain that I saw it somewhere, but um, maybe not anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, anyway, so um, uh, um, what was I gonna do? <clears throat> let's see um we got guest I, well if i can't where did where did student view go this is the right ip right yeah okay yes it is hmm. uh Close the other explorer. Okay, probably. Oops. It's in crypto library.
do I not have? Uh, okay. I thought I had it. Okay, apparently I don't. I don't know why I don't. Um, the only other things that I'm noticing, so I, again, the only thing I'm noticing with gray hack is the procedurally generated stuff. Um, tend, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of variety there, which I mean, I mean, hell, all, all things considered, does it really matter that much? Uh, the answer is not really no, but, um, that would be one thing that I would, I would point out as being kind of a weak point. It, I mean, it's a, it's a weak point that other games in this genre um, aren't even sophisticated enough to have, which says something. What? No, it's there. The library, what? for oh yeah so that's right oh that's right yes i remember <clears throat> it's looking for that um what no what the hell um and the only other real gripes i've had with the game itself so far is just the really minor things like I want tabs in the browser. Um, I want um, yeah, honestly, that's there. There was something else, but I I can't think of it right now. But really minor stuff um, so far. The 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 UI was a little bit clunky for me at first, and it remains clunky because it's just I'm typing here around a. Um, microphone but um ui has a a little little bit of a learning curve at the beginning but overall um smoothed out pretty fast where the f is where is half my stuff is gone um <laughs> hmm. I don't know where it went, but okay. Oops. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I no longer feel like I'm I'm fighting the operating system, at least not to a large extent. Um, obviously, I'm still struggling with a couple of things here. Um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna look it up because I'm missing something somehow, some way, for some reason. I'm certain that it's my fault. So, uh, let's see. Oh. Well, first of all, it's needs a, needs a uh, IP, and we're not providing that, but that's not the error I'm getting anyway. Place the user accounts registered in the server. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where? At... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's try launching it from here. Okay. Uh, all right, that's where I got those. Okay. So that's where I got those usernames from. All right. Um, okay, so then there's that. That's that. 
Now I'm roughly back to where I was before, I think. Except I still can't find student viewer. Weird. Did I did I get user privs last time and I Did I? I might have. I have a bunch of these I have a bunch of these uh exploits here. Um I might have used one of them. Maybe I should go back and rewatch my video. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do give myself a refresher here. Uh hold on a moment. All right, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I I did see um as I was watching that uh this is the wrong local IP. So, that's what we were doing. We we need to get on to number 2. As a matter of fact, I think last time I ran Scanlan I believe this is what I did. Okay. Yeah, here's us. That's... Wait a second. Yeah, this is the router where we're getting to number two. Okay. All right. So that makes sense then. Uh, I'm going to need, I'm just going to dump <laughs> all of my tools on this machine. Just all of them. Come on. Uh, 192.168.02. Okay, um, damn it, no, it's two, why, it keeps giving, I don't understand, crypto is there, is that not, am I losing something, missing something here, well, in any event, it's fine, um, <clears throat> it's running SMTP. So. That's okay. Net session. Okay. Students, employees. Okay. Now I wonder if I suppose the I mean I it saved the exploits and I was wondering you know can I do that I can I can rename them I suppose I could rename them you know SMTP exploit or, or something or or keep notes for the future just happen to notice um all right is this about i think this is about where i was then because if i remember correctly the last time i played i was looking for different smtp exploits or http exploits in order to get on o2 so i think this is about where i was then okay so um Can't connect to net session. Okay, well, let's see what we got here. That's version one. Uh, SMTP version one. Okay. Oh, and there was another note uh, along with that one from Grey Hat Gaming up that I guess at some point I missed an exploit uh, that would have gotten me. Like, uh, I can't remember if it was this challenger or the first one or something, but. Um, because they're procedurally generated, I tended to just kind of um, 
gloss past them because I figured they were mostly the same. Um, but apparently not. So actually, these exploits look oops, very familiar. It's like Triad is there, base is there, eBase is there. So are these just the names being recycled in their different descriptions now? Or I, I, I'm guessing that it's more like a list of exploits that it chooses from, perhaps. Okay. Uh, take advantage of vulnerability SMT service to inject a new password to a registered user, remote use, permission to obtain non root. Root user logged into the computer. I don't know if there is a root user logged into the computer. There could perhaps be. Um, no, I must have gotten on the machine because I remember seeing the student viewer and employee viewer EXEs on there. So... There was, I must have had a working exploit last time. I just don't remember which one it is. So let's try some of the ones I already got. Uh, let's try eBase. Six, eight, oh, two, two, five. Um, this one prints the. What is this? Is that the one that uh oh that prints the that prints booth? Okay, and let's try base or boot. Say booth. Boot. Right. Okay, I'm gonna have two and six eight. Two and two five. Enter new password. Password one. Oh, I can use your found. Okay. Uh, triad. No active. Okay, so there is no root user running. Okay. No root user logged in. We don't need to worry about that. Any user logged into the computer. Take advantage of all the users. Inject new password. Registered user. This might be the ticket. Oh, there is no you there's no user logged in there's no root user and no user okay so there's that okay search no we don't we didn't bring search all the bank credential files and we decide for all passwords uh, okay we're not interested in banking passwords right now required no root user is logged in Any user logged into the system. Minimum one user. Uh, I think we tried this last time because I, I have the exploit there, but let's try it anyway. And. Yeah, no user. Okay. Uh, Hawkeye. No, nope, there's no user logged into the system. Minimum of three registered. No, you nope, there's no root user logged in. Take advantage of all blah, blah, blah. There is no root user logged in, so we skip that. Dependencies on kernel module SO. There is no root user logged in, so we'll skip that. Is that oh, is this the I have this one too? Yeah. 
minimum two users. Okay, so that's the one that we used because we have that for sure. We have three users on the system, we presume. Yeah, because I couldn't actually get it running. So we, pre we, we presumed, but we shall presume away. There we go. There we go. And oh, there's my that's my shit from last time. It's still on the on the box. Okay. All right. Now we're back to where we were. And now I can see. Uh, let's see. It's public. I'm guessing. No. Um. Okay. Um, that's another tip there from um, Grey Hat Gaming. Uh, LSLA is the Linux command for uh, it's the the list command and then the parameters for for viewing um, attributes permissions. Um, I just. Um, so it works in, in Linux. It, it works in the game as well. I'm, I'm finding that most of the Linux, most Linux command line tools are here. There are a couple of them that frustratingly are not, um, but I don't miss them that much, to be honest. CD and LS are the ones, obviously, that, that kind of have to work. Uh, that said, it's kind of weird. Binaries are EXEs. That's a Windows portable executable file. Um, and we're definitely not running Windows and, well, wh whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, what was I doing? Oh, right, I'm looking for the student view. Uh, probably under user bin then. Whoops. Come on. I swear, I, I'm not this bad of a typer. It's just typing around a microphone. Uh, notepad, terminal. Uh, image viewer and PDF, or, uh, but I don't see any other things I was looking for. Uh, so under bin, then, yes, there it is. All right, I'm a guest, so I don't have permission to use that. So now I was at a point where I was looking to escalate my privacy. Excuse me while I get a bit more comfortable. Um, what? Where am I? Oh, I'm... Duh. Okay. Um, all right. So, um... Let's see. Um, so we need versions. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I see. Here's my my problem, my my paradox, my conundrum with gray hack, is I find, and this is actually a good sign. I find that when I'm playing this game, I'm constantly thinking about what I would actually do if I'm actually doing a pen test or, or doing a, a hack the box or try hack me or, or something and then also trying to reconcile that with the game aspect of it and it's a good thing because it's got me thinking the right way it's just that i'm trying to figure out what my constraints are with the tools that i have because the 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 reason that we use hack the box and try hack me and, and that kind of a thing is because we can use our own platform our own tool set we can have our own vm um, you know, this is me in a game, the, the desktop that's in the game, the tools that are in the game, the exploits that are in the game. Um, it's a, it's a good thing that it's having me, having me do this conflict, but I'm at the same time, I'm conflicted because right now what I would do is I would try to figure out what library versions we have by running various different commands and checking around and, and finding it. 
Um, but something tells me that this is leading me, the game is leading me more in the direction of social engineering and trying to figure that out. So now I'm also thinking like, well, am I going to need to get email addresses or, or something? Because I only have usernames right now. But actually, I just, as I was talking, I remembered that there was a library analysis tool. That's probably what I need to run. Or not. Wait, of course not. That's a library. Um, but is there a bin that goes with it? Um, no. Okay. Well, then, if the game is leaning me in the direction of social engineering, then, um, Okay, so there's no like personal docs or anything with their information on it. Um, and when I ran SMTP mail list earlier, it did not give me fully qualified. Yeah, email not found. Okay. So it gave me the user, but there's no associated. And then I couldn't run it on the router. Do I need to get to that? third machine at 192.168.03 if I if I scan that um It's not two. Oh, it's giving me the same crypto library error. What am I what am I missing? I thought this is what they were looking for, but I mean that's already there as well. <sighs> okay. Um, all right. Is there something that I'm missing? Tools. Was there another? That's my bank. No, it wasn't a legit tool. Hmm. <sighs> okay. Um, if there's not already a tool written, then we do have the code editor. Uh, let's see what the uh, let's see what the old manual has to say here.
ports, local IP, change password per user to Wi-Fi nodes. I probably don't make use of the manual as much as I should, especially for somebody who's fairly new to the game. But games imitate life, and is more or less my MO. Oh, there is a get content. You can't cat, but you can get content. Right? Or maybe you can cat. I can't remember. I might be getting my games mixed up. Looking for... Oh, here's a search up here. Get a lib version? Print the version of the library. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is this scripting language based on? If to equals... So it looks vaguely Python-ish. Operator strings. Here's lists. Holy moly. This is a whole other aspect of the game that I completely overlooked so far. I kind of super like this. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is going to be a, a pain. <laughs> But uh, in terms of a, a learning experience, this is, a, this is a whole different ball of wax. I, I can't think of a single hacking-themed or hacking simulator game that really included any scripting at all. So that's cool. Um... Okay, um, Metalib. Excuse me. Metalib overflow. Exploits the indicated vulnerability through the buffer overflow method. The object return can be of various types or not even return anything. Okay. As the memory areas load. Um, okay. I um how long am I at this now? I'm okay, I'm I'm got about ten minutes left, but I can continue to do this. Um Okay, this is really intriguing. I kind of want to. I kind of want to go that route just to see if I can. I, I, I guess I should probably explain in you know, what I'm thinking out loud here. So, there's this scripting functionality which I haven't played with at all. If I recall correctly, there was a brief mention of it in like a tutorial or something, and I just kind of hand waved it as like, yeah, yeah. There's not going to be anything like super useful in a game um like this but it kind of looks like it is um honestly uh like this looks like something that would be legitimately useful and fairly true to life um and i mean i don't i'm saying fairly i mean it's i, I can't i can't i i have no significant way in which it would differ other than of course um, you know, maybe some tactical issues that I'm not aware of just yet. Uh, but my point is, is that if I can script in this game, then that means I can do a lot more than I thought I originally could, or I should be able to do a lot more than I originally thought. Maybe. I don't want to jump the gun here or whatever, but I mean, we have classes and functions here that look like they, they do what I, what I need them to do or what I want to do right now. I'm just wondering how, how, can I actually make use of this? So I think what I'm actually going to do is open up the code. Oh, I got All right, we're going to close some stuff down here. Because I do, I do remember it did say, like, you can compile your own code. I think I even compiled something 
like earlier at the beginning when I was playing before. All available terminal programs are programmed okay with the gray script. Oh, it's the gray. Okay, so it's a gray script language. It's uh, it's I can expect syntactic. I don't. I can't take syntax for granted here. I'm gonna have to make sure that that's right. Um, in the code editor, you can create your own terminal programs and exploits. For more information, see the scripting basic section of the manual. That's where I'm at. Within the manual, you can view the source code of the mentioned programs by clicking on the open code button. Okay. Neat. Let's actually, before we get done here for today, let's take a look at... No, I don't, I don't have any that I can actually load here. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's get some, uh, the middle noob version. I mean, that's pretty neat. But didn't it say just now that I can load? So oh, cause I, I have the compiled versions. Okay. Um, I could go, I could go and I can get the source code from the browser. Um, which I don't have just yet. I'm going to close this as well. Um, I think what I might do is take this last 10 minutes that I have to play today and mess around in the code editor a little bit. And then maybe when I get ready for part five, I think I'm at, um, maybe I can try running this thing and see what happens. So that is going to be it for, for this part, but I'll be, I will be back. I'm not done with this yet. I want to put a, I want to put a little more time in this, poke around a little bit more, do a couple of the challenges, learn learn the ropes a little bit, um, and uh, and then and try some multiplayer before I'm done with Greyhack here for the summer. So we'll see you on the next one. Take care.